for Sweden. Let's see where we end up. It should be mostly downwind-ish sailing. About 20 knots of wind, I think, most of the way. Uh, might get a little bit windier in the middle of the night. And we should hopefully get there before to, before dark tomorrow. So it'll be maybe a 20 hour sail, 24 hours-ish. Uh, things go well. Should be plenty of wind. We got about an hour to work our way out of these, uh, these rocks and stuff around Norway. And then we, it should be kind of in the open water. I can go rest, turn on the AIS system. Uh, for ships, we are, are really the only obstacle. And then when we get to Denmark, we need to watch out because there's like a kind of a cape that sticks up and there's like, a, it can be sand, bars, and stuff like that up there. There's, that's the lights on Norway. The waves are gradually getting bigger. Not too bad yet, but I think we still, we get close to land, things are gonna pick up. Fortunately, I gotta bear off now. So we'll be going a little more downwind. And the way you should move a little bit after the beam, maybe that'll be more comfortable. Should be more comfortable. And I don't really see any ships. That's a good sign. So maybe we'll get some good rest tonight. And the bed is even on the more comfortable side. We, have a, we are on a starboard tack. That means the wind comes over the starboard side of the boat first, I believe. The starboard is to windward. We have uh, several ships showing up on the AIS. Can't really see them that far. But good to know that they're out there. It's crazy how many ships there are out here. We got a 10 mile radius and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's the morning, we sailed through the night. I got some pretty good blocks of sleep in there when I wasn't uh, looking out for our boats that so were getting real close. But we can just start to make out a little bit of uh, start to make out a little bit of the coast of Denmark up there. I think I see some windmills or something. We've been sailing all night and now we're very close to Skagen. We're about six miles away. So the problem is we were sailing downwind to get here and then we had to sail around this little cape and now we have to go directly upwind six miles. And I thought maybe I'd, I'd just turn on the motor. Um, but that plan is not really working because we're bouncing around so much. We're not making enough speed to keep the uh, water from going past the rudder to steer. We're going about a knot, maybe sometimes two knots. Maybe if we get close enough, the land will block, will block the wind and we can get in there. But I think we might just have to turn around and sail to Sweden uh, because otherwise I'll be beating up wind all day just to get in. I'd rather uh, make my way to Sweden. It's really cool to stop here though. It's just miserable. So I officially given up on Skagen. Goodbye Denmark. We're going to Sweden now. It was just too much, too much going to windward. I didn't really feel like dealing with that right now. So now we've got I think 30, 30 miles, 35 miles to get to Sweden. So we should get in it there later tonight. I'm just gonna listen to some audio books, maybe edit some videos until then. Now I got the whisker pull out. Um, we're still getting a cute, confused uh, seas off of this uh, land mass here. But hopefully as we get a little distance, things will even out. And I'll need to put my Sweden flag on eventually. Some uh, tanker ships up here.
I suppose it's the best set. This is where I'll be uh, pulling the boat out of the water for winter. But uh, that's kind of nice too. Get a little break. Don't want to burn myself out on the sailing. And there's lots more stuff to do next season. As it's 19 meters, let's hope it fits. Yikes! <laughs> Always looks way lower than it is. Sailing into Sweden. Going fast. Got our uh, Sweden flag to put out now. A nice one. now at this marina. This will be Pickle's home for the for the winter. So today I'm back working on boat projects trying to knock out as many projects as I can so when I come back next year I don't have an overwhelming list of things. So I figured I'd look at the uh, the diesel heater. Now we're getting error um, 06 which I'm not sure if that's what uh, the error I was getting before or not. But that apparently is a fan error. And I can feel it if I turn it on. I can feel, I, I took the cover off back here and I can feel the, I took the fan shroud off and the fan stopped turning. Or it turns a little bit, it's turning. And then it shuts off. And error six again. So uh, I think we we're getting a different error before and the fan was, was working. And also, I think I also have a bad uh, temperature sensor because randomly the, the the heater will just turn the fan on like it's overheating and needs to cool it off. Um, so I think this this unit I have has a number of problems. Um, and I think, uh, well, fortunately, I don't really need it anymore because I have uh, a little electric heater for uh, the rest of uh, this year and maybe early spring next year when I'm in the marina, just getting ready to go set sail. And then we'll probably be sailing back down into warmer, warmer climates. So I think what I will do is maybe and not really worry about this. Uh, and then if I do need heat again, I'll just replace the unit. Uh, I think all the hard stuff is done. I've run the wires and the, the, uh, the got the fancy exhaust. So we'll leave that installed. Um, I, one thing that I, I, idea I had my, my new friend, Ulf, but he'll probably show up in some future videos is I want to take the ducks and I want to get, well, for, for one, I want to get a lawn or one that can run over to my bed. And I also want to take, a, get a little, a, a little Y connector and run it into the engine compartment so then I can warm up my my diesel motor because uh, it's really the Yanmars they really don't like uh, starting cold it just takes a long time it, it always starts but it's just like if I could just turn on the heater for 30 minutes before I ran the motor and it would just start right up so nicely uh, so I think that would be a really a, like a good use of your diesel heater you could just kind of duct it into the uh, the air intake on have it start up more lively. There's no there's no glow plugs on the the Yanmar uh, GM motors. The two two GM twenty is what I have. So uh, maybe, maybe a future project if I'm going to be sailing in more colder weather. Uh, but right now uh, we're going to be pulling the boat out for winter. We'll run some coolant through the the salt water part and then uh, haul the boat out. We're going to get a crane. Me and uh, my my neighbor. I think we'll have the the crane truck come and pull both of our boats out after he, he wants to go on one more sailing trip so we're not quite ready to do that yet but i can start prepping my boat take the sails down and get everything ready so that's what's going on right now i'm also going to change the oil too just to kind of uh have one less thing to do in the winter in the, in the spring and also I, I think it's better for the the boat to sit with fresh oil in it my solar panels are just not putting out enough power uh but i do have a uh, shore power here so uh my friend in Norway hooked me up with this nice little battery charger so that will keep the batteries topped off for the winter. Little horse. Alright, we're 
pulling down the head sail for the winter. Today we're drying out the sails so they can be stored nice and dry. Got to take the boats out and put them on the, on the land over there. I need to cut these wires. So I've marked them. You got four dots, four dots. And uh, this makes me sad, but um, I'm cutting them on the outside instead of the inside because this little tube, I can't get the wires in and out easily. It's they're very, it's very full. All right. Uh, we can. I got the crane. We're gonna lower the mast today with our friends. Oh, I wish more boatyards had these uh, do-it-yourself mast cranes. Saved you a bunch of money over having the boatyard pull it. And uh, with a couple of friends, it didn't even take too long. All right, so I got the mast down. I take off the Windex so we don't ding that up. So you had a bit of a bird's nest in the mast. I need to cover up these wires to protect them. So we've got the heater pointed at the motor and that has been making a huge difference when it comes to starting the thing. Watch this. Starts right up. All right, just pumped out the old oil. Now the fun part, the oil filter. All right, good for another adventure. Now I'm pumping out the bilge. Um, I'm gonna see how long it takes to, to fill up with the, when I'm not sailing because I'm gonna need to do something about it. I think I'll probably fill the bilge with antifreeze over the winter. Do that without a crack. <clears throat> the hole is, yep. Coming in? It's coming out. Uh, <laughs> ah, smart. Ulf is winterizing his boat. Good trick with the bucket there. My dinghy battery has not been working or charging lately. I don't know why. It always says 12.2 volts. Uh, I put the charger on it and it goes up to like 13 or 14 or whatever. But no matter how long I charge it, it always goes back to 12.2 volts. So I emailed the company and uh, they said to open it up. And they said that I just need to reset the battery management monitor. So you can see here's what is inside. Here's the BMS. So I need to unplug this little plug and plug it back in. I'm gonna have to rip out some of this foam because it's like glued in there. <clears throat> Today is boat haul out day. We've got the uh, crane truck here, lifting pickle out of the water. The pickle is out of the water. Basically no growth at all. Just hitting the, uh, the water line. I can't believe how clean this is. Really good paint. A huge thanks to my friends here in Sweden, Ulf and Mirko, for helping me get my boat all sorted out here. There goes Pickle from the truck onto the cradle. So now my neighbor's boat's coming out. Now I am, oh, it was out of the water. We got to uh, antifreeze. All right, so I just, I just disconnected the water, the salt water pump and I filled it and I ran it with that. So now we've got uh, antifreeze in the engine and now I'm gonna put some, just a little on the builds. I figure it can't hurt in case it freezes down there with the water. I did, I did pump it out. Just help things, I think. I broke this little elbow piece in the process of pulling the hoses off the saltwater strainer, 
And this is becoming a real pain in the butt to, to get out of there. I might try some heat and see if that will work. Now I'm pulling off the bunk here so I can get to the water tank. Hopefully I don't, I don't really want to pull that whole thing apart. Hopefully this will come out. Come on, you. Oh, one more screw. This water tank's been leaking. Um, also, my I'm wondering if the leak is causing the pressurized water not to work either. So look at that. Take, investigate this. I need to drain the water tank also for the for the winter. So it's coming out. So there's the water tank. I guess it's pretty empty. I'm gonna go take it out and fill it up and see if I can figure out. It leaks when it, when the boat heals over to the starboard side. So I'm gonna pull this out for just figure out what's going on. Maybe it's these things or, that are leaking. I put these hatches in the inspection ports uh, so I could clean the tank the other when I last year. Well, you can see these uh, little plastic hatches obviously aren't waterproof. I mean, it should have been apparent. There's no gasket on the part that unscrews. I figured since they're on top of the tank, it wouldn't be a big deal, but when we heal over, yeah, that's leaking a lot. So, hmm. I guess maybe I'll see if I can find some some watertight inspection hatches or, or just keep only filling the tank a quarter of the way full. Got pickles and our new home for the winter. And Ulf let us use this cradle he found. Uh, I think it will work. It seems to work pretty nice. It's amazing how much like dirt and mud you can acquire. Like underneath, like this is this was like completely clean when I put it all together a few months ago. You could just like all the stuff migrating dirt migrating down underneath there. I get some water in there, so I'll get this all cleaned up. The tank is out there. I'm gonna figure out what I want to do with that a little bit later. I'm gonna be flying to Croatia tomorrow. I just got a really cheap ten dollar flight from Sweden to Zagreb, so. Uh, just trying to kind of pack up the boat. I don't know if I'll come back before next uh, spring. I might, I might not. But in case I don't, I want to have everything ready for winter. I'm kind of cleaned up. So the pickles hold out for the winter, but don't worry, we'll be back to her in May with more sailing adventures to come. Uh, probably next week I'll post start posting some of these videos where I've been like sailing around on this Hobie Cat. I'm gonna set it up for camping around in the Florida Keys, and then also maybe my glider raiding video. Maybe that'll come out next. Um, we'll see. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.